So I promised myself I would film one video a week. I filmed this entire video and realized it was in portrait mode and not landscape. Oh well, I, the project's done. There's no going back and redoing it. So I'm gonna share the video anyway. Uh, for those of you watching on Instagram, it won't matter. It may even be the best format for you. So today's project's all about turning a tool handle for a gouge that I bought maybe a year ago. So I bought a Robert Sorby 13 millimeter half inch spindle gouge. I don't want to give away too much of the finished piece, but I bought this gouge. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been at least a year ago. And of course you can save money uh, when you buy just the tool part itself without a handle. So you, you save a little bit of money and uh, I, you know, I don't mind uh, the standard handles that come on tools. I think they work great. Obviously they put a lot of time and research into designing their handles so that they fit well and they work well for everyone. But I wanted to do something uh, unique, something different in the long run. I saved some money because uh, the materials that I used, um, I used some black walnut, I used a scrap of copper. Um, so yeah, I, I think this thing turned out really well. You'll have to watch the video to uh, or skip to the end if you're impatient to see the finished product. But this thing turned out really cool and it was actually really easy to make. If, um, if you're just getting into wood turning, this is a great project to start with and uh, you can save yourself some money. You can save yourself some money, buy you the one tool you need to get started, and then make all the handles for all the tools you want for further along in your turning journey. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks so much for watching.
here it is. And of course, the freezer kicks on the moment that I'm showing you. Black walnut. This is a piece out of my scrap bin. A copper coupler. I think these, I think it was like a dollar maybe for this coupler. I use these in my fishing reels to add copper accents. So I'm, I'm familiar with this process, um, just in a different setup. Uh, the only thing that this tool might need is I might need a little bit of epoxy because if you can see that call is just a little bit loose. Um, so I may epoxy that. I may also, um, and folks, you can tell me what you think about it, but I may also try the trick that I see folks doing with um, ax handles and such where they'll soak uh, this particular portion in oil so the wood will swell. I may try that, um, but honestly, it's not that loose. Like I actually have to put quite a bit of pressure on it to turn it. But the gouge is in there. I probably put the gouge in a little bit further than needed, but this is black walnut and it is not as tough as say an ash handle or a hickory or an oak might be. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of space for this copper collet because that's gonna give it a lot of uh, stability here. I'm not gonna have to worry about this end blowing out on me. It's a really nice tight fit. I didn't have to use epoxy or anything in this hole. Um, the tool actually fit really tight. I had to put this in my vise and actually use the vise to hold the tool. I wrapped it with a rag so I wouldn't scratch it and then proceeded to work the handle down onto the actual uh, gouge. But yeah, it's a beautiful piece of black walnut. I used my uh, Fordham pendant drill to carve some little divots in it. This is um, a technique I use when I make my um, uh, morels or morels, uh, the little mushrooms I make. And then of course I, I used a parting tool to burn in these lines just to give it a little bit of something to break up this wood pattern. The shape is a little bit different from what you would see on a store-bought handle. So the, usually the store-bought handles taper quite a bit more in this area. But the one thing I found is that I like a little bit larger handle. And the nice thing about this black walnut is that with the larger diameter, it's not overly heavy. So this isn't a very heavy tool. Um, it's uh, probably a quite bit lighter than um, a tool on a handle, say made of ash or oak. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I just love it. Um, turned out really well. This is a tad bit shorter than the standard Robert Sorby handle. But I actually like that because this is gonna be um, my spindle gouge. So this is purely for spindle work. And I need something that can give me a little bit, um, a little bit finer um, approach to the wood because I, I use a bowl gouge for just about all of my spindle turning. So this is the first spindle gouge that I, that I own. Um, and I'm looking forward to using it and seeing how much more detail I can get with the spindle gouge as opposed to the, the bowl gouge. And then that way I can keep the bowl gouge specifically for bowls and have my spindle gouge for my spindle work. Yeah, I, I could not be happier with the way this turned out. I think all the tools I buy going forward will come without handles because I, I think I prefer to have a custom handle. I, I want to uh, invest in a, a larger, um, uh, what am I trying to say? A larger roughing gouge. And so for that, I actually want something heavy. I'm gonna give me some uh, heavy material and I wanna make it longer. Probably a good deal, maybe maybe even eight inches longer than this handle, just so that I can get you know get the hand back and have some actual leverage on the piece when I'm doing uh, my rough work. I purchased a I'm trying to, I don't know the name of the company. Um, it's a carbide um, hollowing tool, which is on its way. It should be here maybe even today. And so I'm going to need a handle for that one. I have an aluminum handle that will attach straight to it, but honestly. I really dig the custom handle. So I think I'm gonna make a custom one for that tool. So if I do, I'll film that and I'll put it in landscape for YouTube specifically. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this video. If you're new to wood turning, this is a great first project for you. Uh, there are tons of other videos out there that are much more instructional and more lean toward step-by-step -step process than mine. Definitely check those out. Um, honestly though, so you got a little bit of know-how. This is a really simple project, easy to do. And the wonderful thing about it is if you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. And honestly, is this handle perfect? Probably not. And as I get to use it, I'm going to learn 
you know, the things that I want to change about it. And, uh, you know, the next one will just get better and better. Pretty excited about that. I'm really looking forward to using different handle materials. That could be a lot of fun. I've got some spalted stuff that might look really cool on a handle. I love the copper. If anything, maybe this copper collet would be just a tad bit shorter. And I could definitely do that on, on a wood that's harder and I'm not as worried about um, breakout on, on this, this end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If uh, you're watching on Instagram, please like and follow this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment, good, bad, you know, recommendations for next time, things you might change. Um, I appreciate all the engagement. Thanks so much for watching. Take it easy.